What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel. Today on The Hard Count, we're going to give you our power rankings for the quarterbacks in the Big 12. First things first, we say it every time, subscribe to the channel. We're ramping it up. College football season, you're not going to want to miss a minute. For this video, we're talking power rankings, okay? We're, I mean, sports media, we talk rankings, we talk numbers, we talk lists, and we're just about at the end of that, but... Before we get into the regular season, I got to give you the preseason power rankings. So we're going to check back in periodically, and this list right here is going to shift, okay? So if your guy's not on here right now, don't be upset because he might be on there in week three. He might be on there at the end of the season. So this is just a preseason power rankings for the Big 12's best quarterbacks, in my opinion. So number five, I was really close to putting Casey Thompson here. I'm going Spencer Sanders because of the experience, because of the sample size. I think Casey Thompson is going to be a guy that finds his way on this list eventually. But Oklahoma State Spencer Sanders was plagued by injury a year ago. I think he has the potential to have a big year this year. I'm not sold on him personally, but I think the opportunity for Spencer Sanders, if you want to make a statement, if you want to show scouts, if you want to be the guy in Stillwater, play a full season this year, be healthy, and make smart decisions with the football. We saw it a lot last year through careless interceptions, had bad fumbles, but in the bowl game, we saw him throw four picks, or excuse me, four touchdowns, no picks, which was good Spencer Sanders, and if he can continue to trend that way, I like a lot what he brings to the table because he's such a great athlete. And so for Oklahoma State, you're going to rely on Spencer Sanders, I think even more so than you've had to in the past. Going to be big for him to take the next step. I like him in that five spot. Number four, Skylar Thompson of Kansas State might be the oldest college football player in the history of the game. Like he's been playing forever, going on to his sixth year with Kansas State, got hurt a year ago, and he's not a guy that's going to put up gaudy numbers. I mean, the team was two and one before he left. He had three touchdowns rushing against Oklahoma in 2019, completed 60% of his passes, 2,000 yards, like 12 touchdowns, five picks. So nothing crazy, nothing that's going to put you on any Maxwell Award winning lists, but Skylar Thompson runs this offense to perfection. He's the heart and soul of his team. The fact that he's going to come back and play one more year in Manhattan speaks volumes to his character. So I'm really excited for, for what he's going to bring to the table. I'm really excited for Skylar Thompson in this last season of eligibility he has. We're going to see a lot of him on the ground, like I mentioned. In 2019, 405 yards, 11 touchdowns. I think they're going to ask a little bit less of him on the ground this year to try and uh, preserve his health going forward. But Skylar Thompson, a guy to watch, comes in at number four on our list. Number three, Max Duggan of TCU. Another guy that didn't put up gaudy numbers, only threw 10 touchdowns a year ago, uh, but he's 6'2", 201. He's a phenomenal athlete, folks. Like Skylar Thompson, he does a lot with his legs. He had 10 touchdowns rushing, so he threw 10 and ran 10, one of them being an 81-yard touchdown against Texas Tech. My dude, a, a quarterback running 81 yards? That doesn't happen that often in college football. So Max Duggan, a special talent. If he takes the next step with what TCU has on offense, especially right next to him in the backfield with Zach Evans, I think he has a chance to have a really special year. Again, TCU's cycle of recruitment is now going to be pretty mature for the most part. So the excuses are slowly deteriorating for, for Max Duggan. Again, his health is, is now supposed to be full go. Um, so for him, I'm excited to have him get a, a full offseason under his belt. Excited for him to really cut it loose this fall. He's coming at number three. And number two and number one, you could probably guess at, at which two these are going to be. I don't think you're wrong whether you put Rattler at two or Purdy at two, but I went Purdy at two. Uh, he's going to go down as the best Iowa State quarterback in history. Like him and Seneca Wallace just stand alone, honestly. 25 school records for Brock Purdy. Uh, I mean, he took a step back statistically last year. I think a lot of that's attributed to a smaller sample size, less games, COVID and all that. But I mean, the guy is Iowa State through and through. Had a chance to go elsewhere and play for a bigger program, but he said, no, I want to go to Iowa State. I believe in Matt Campbell, and I have a lot of respect for him for that. Um, he's primed for a big year. Could have gone to the NFL a year ago, decided to stay, decided to try and uh, see through Iowa State's college football playoff hopes. So I'm, I'm rooting for Brock Purdy. I think he's a guy that you look at as someone who could, could really make a big statement this year. I mean, he had a great junior season throwing 27 touchdowns, something like seven interceptions. I mean, dude takes care of the football really well. Not unlike the other players on this list, brings a lot in terms of his legs. With the zone read scheme that they'll add in with him, I think he's a guy that you look at uh, making plays with his legs, with his arm. I mean, he needs to take over this Iowa State offense, as he has in years past. But I think the difference here is uh, they relied on Brees Hall a lot last year. This coming season, I don't know if you can lean on Brees Hall quite as much. Also, you don't have a ton on the outside. You have Milton. You have 
good tight ends, but that's more for the middle of the field. I don't know that you have that explosive playmaker to help Brock Purdy. So will that hurt him statistically? I don't know, but it's something to keep an eye on and I think will be very telling for him and for this offense as they choose to push the ball vertically or not. Finally, Spencer Rattler, and you probably even knew this was the answer for number one when you clicked on this video. He's the best quarterback in the Big 12, if not the country. 29 touchdowns, only seven interceptions a year ago. Most impressive to me, 67% completion percentage. So he knows where to go with the football, and he's getting it there accurately, and his receivers are having it in a great spot to catch it and likely turn up field and run. And that's going to be crucial for him because he has so many weapons around him, more than anybody else on this list. He's got Mario Williams, who we talked about as being a breakout player for them going forward. He's got Hazelwood. He's got Mims. Like, there is a lot of guys here that can make plays and make him look good. So for Spencer Rattler, I want to see him take over and be the alpha male for this team. I want to see him take ownership of this program. He's not a redshirt freshman anymore. He is not a younger guy. He is technically going to be an upperclassman and be someone they look to for leadership. So can he take over that role, continue to produce, and just take the next step? I mean, I want to see him process defenses quickly and be able to, to make the smart throw with the football. And we saw him mature worlds worlds further from the Texas game. I mean, the Texas benching was the best thing that could have happened to Spencer Rattler because he was a completely different ball player after that benching. And we saw as they finished the season and just reeled off to their sixth straight Big 12 title. So Spencer Rattler right now is the guy in the Big 12, I think, that you got to look at as being the best quarterback in the entire conference. This is going to be a fluid power ranking system. Again, we're going to revisit this week to week. Uh, it may not be every single week, but periodically we're going to come back to this, reevaluate it, and give you our best assessment of the signal callers in the great conference that is the Big 12. Because it might not be around, folks. might be the last season for the Big 12, but you can bet your bottom dollar we're going to have you covered here at 365 Sports for everything that moves, breathes, and plays football, especially in the fall. So again, that's it for us here at The Hard Count. Like the video, follow me on Twitter at JD Pacal. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time.